Hello and welcome to today's LOL Esports Roundup. We're going to cover the news of the last 24 hours. Yesterday I said there was a chance I wasn't going to do a video like this because we hadn't had news in a few days. And then after I uploaded the video, well actually when I was exporting, 100 Thieves made some news. Immortals, Fred Brian, and TSM over the last 24 hours. So we have a video, a roundup to go over. Um, so the Gwen Nar video going over 100 champion matchups is saved and... Um, will be uploaded when there isn't news. So, 100 Thieves. Kaz, or Kaz, I really don't, I think it's French. Don't, uh, not gonna promise anything. Um, name the head coach. They were an assistant on 100 Thieves the last three years, going 65 and 43, taking three trips to Worlds. We are aware how two of those ended, not getting out of play-ins, but nevertheless has been given the opportunity to coach 100 Thieves. Um, you know, it is what it is. Obviously, now that they are the head coach, maybe, you know, things are different when they run the show. The assistant, Nuke Duck, is one. Kyrie is another. Um, two players, Dan Dan as well. Players that we know of um, over the years. Nuke Duck especially after playing last year in um the lec so immediately going to coaching and not only just immediately going to coaching but going to coaching in the lcs so that is something of note immortals a blaze olive joins to be the mid um you know going going with the flow joining kenvi and revenge right now the bot lane is not announced for immortals golden guardians already probably or it is official they're going with gory i think we went over that already actually um, so he needed a home. He found a home. Two two one KDA eight five two CS per minute sixty eight four KP last year in the LCS with GG across sixteen games would have a twenty two six kill share twenty two one gold share ten champions played in sixteen games which is pretty good eight five two CS per minute was not a problem when it came to getting behind in lane uh, from a farming standpoint now. There are points that definitely stick out to me when it comes to his his victor getting picked off multiple times last year, kind of disrespectful in lane, and causing himself to be um, picked off. So, I mean, that is what it is. He's gaining farm. He's trying to keep up, but he's leaving himself open with his aggression, which is a problem. The champion pool is nice. Um, definitely LCS worthy. Would I say an upper level LCS mid laner? Probably not, but still... I believe an LCS worthy mid laner nonetheless. Speaking of being worthy of their region, um, Fred at Breon has signed Effort to play support. Delight going to Gen G. So there is an opening Effort, former T1 support. Um, really, really struggled with Nongshim last year. Caused himself to get benched. They went through a carousel of supports, even picking off Snowflower, who had actually not been signed in the TCL retired pretty much and then was picked up by Nongshim to be again uh, alongside ghost effort 2-3 kda 71 4 kp nine champions in 22 games effort did not look good neither did peter snowflower blessing it didn't matter who was playing support for Nongshim. that was a tire fire and um the support role had a lot to do with that as well as the rest of the team it was just not working bdd ghost we've went over bdd already when he signed with um, KT Rolster a few days ago. But nevertheless, Fred Brian making a move that honestly I'm not surprised about. Fred Brian are a team. I don't want to drag them through the mud. It's not really that it's not really fair to them. But if they play the same style of game that they played last year, I'm going to think the same about them. Um, a team that is kind of stuck in its ways and never will find success playing the way they do. So um you know, this move doesn't surprise me at all. TSM announced their roster. We knew Solo was coming back. I don't mention players that are re-signing on teams on here. Somebody asked yesterday, isn't Faker signing big news? Well, it was it was assumed. Um, you know, him re-signing is whatever. I'm not surprised. Um, so I'm not talking about something where a player didn't move teams. Um, so Solo re-signs. Chime re-signs. Chowie staying on board as coach so the two newcomers boogie and neo boogie was playing in latin america last year he has played in japan went to worlds 
with V3 Esports in Japan, has played in the LMS as well. 644 KDA, 606 CS per minute, 74 2 KP was dominant in the um, Latin American League last year. Like Korean import is dominating Latin America. I think that just says it all. Um, really don't have to explain more than that. Similar to how we see Arthur in Steel dominate their minor regions as Korean import junglers. Just They can just go on whatever they want and carry. 33-2 um, kill share, 21 Three gold share played uh, six champions in 12 games with Astral, eventually losing in a crazy ending against Isaris. If you missed it, I've mentioned it a few times. You should watch the ending to the Latin American Summer Finals to decide who goes to Worlds. It was electric. Boogie is, um, I would, excuse me, definitely argue that is a he is definitely probably LCS worthy. Um, TSM's gonna stink probably so. Boogie, I'm not going to necessarily right now assume he's going to be a problem with them is the reason why they struggle. I think it's going to be more than just that, but, um, you know, can carry has shown it six CS per minute, 32% kill share in the playoffs in his, in, in Latin America. I mean, those are like Jose Diodo level numbers, things like that, that we saw in years past from Latin America. Um, so it, it makes sense that he is getting a run in the LCS now. Never did play in the LCK, so that's a thing. Neo uh, joins to play AD Carry alongside Chime. Neo had played with Dignitas last year, getting benched for spawn at a certain point. Um, 281 KDA, 775 CS per minute. There's a caveat there. There are a couple Senna games. 58-4 KP, 18-2 kill share, 21-6 gold share, played 9 games five champions two of those games like i said being senna games so four out of seven elsewhere the thing that i have a problem with i i looked closer at the cs numbers right because 775 is not indicative of how he plays the other you know four champions that are more you know 80 carry focus they're not senna right so his zeri over 10 cs per minute which is fine playing the zeri keeping up but the lucian 8.62 so he's probably you know, hemorrhaging one CS per minute when he's playing the Lucian, which was his most played champion last year in summer. So really, 775 obviously is not indicative, but we're looking around a 9 to 9.2 probably. I mean, just assuming, not actually doing the math um, for his his CS per minute. I mean, that's, that's not great, right? Um, that's not enough to be at a, a major region level. Um, you need to do more. Obviously, Dignitas were not a great team. They eventually, sorry, I just hit the mic. Um, obviously, they weren't great. They sold off River. Um, you know, they, they they had a lot of problems in top lane going between Gamsu and Hoon. However, we all said that was going to happen going into the year. I mean, I, I mean, going into the split, I definitely said that that was a weird, weird, screwed up situation with Dignitas. Um, and I was not a Fake God fan to begin with, but Fake God would have done more for them than Hoon or Gamsu. 58.4 KP, that's extremely low for an 80 carry. I mean, how often are we seeing 80 carries with below 60 um, KP and also not farming over 10? Like, you got to be doing one or the other. Like, just like any other role, I'm, I'm pretty clear that, like, at least in my opinion, and I'm no analyst by any means, but you've got to either be getting kills or you got to be farming like if you're doing neither what are you doing like you're pressuring possibly but we have no indicator of that with stats right we don't see how pressure affects gold necessarily you see jungle proximity but at the same time how valuable is jungle proximity if your opposition doesn't know that you're there similar to every other role how does it like unless you're you know um what baron dancing or or setting up for drake or whatever like sure we can see that you're probably doing that, but we don't have a, a number to put on how how effective that was to figure out, okay, well, you gave up here to gain something here. You know what I'm saying? So um, right now, based on these numbers, Neo isn't looking good. And I think a lot of people probably think Neo is not, pro eh, he might not be LCS level. Um, so TSM looking like they're going to struggle. I wish they'd kept instinct. They didn't. Um, so... This is what they're going with. And uh, that's the news for the day. So if you like the video, like it. 
uh, comment below with your opinions. Share the video if you enjoyed it so much. Subscribe to the channel because if there's no news tomorrow, that Nar Gwen video will go up. Um, so there's that. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube member. $3 a month supports me so this channel can stay alive. I'd really appreciate it because I have, you know, I started streaming a couple times and I'd like to be able to get this channel to where I can live view all the games because I already watch all four major regions, 95% of the games. So I might as well live view them when I do it. So hopefully when we get, if the channel can get there, I can give that to you. Um, and I think that'll really boost the channel. So $3 a month supports me. Get a badge in the comment section. $10 a month supports me, obviously. And you get extra content. Um, that's American football content a couple times a week when the season's going on. So if you want that, join. And uh, thank you for watching.